first. And we will open up Chronosync. Chronosync is a great program. I'm not going to go into a review of it, but it gets the job done for what we want to do. I suggest you go out and get yourself a copy. Chronosync is very easy to use. It has five sections here to where you can put different options in and get different sort of results as far as your syncing is concerned. It has a left target and a right target, and the operation is basically what type of syncing do you want to do? And you see you have many options. You can go left to right, right to left, bidirectional meaning if you add anything to one side, it is added on the other side, and if you delete anything on one side, the opposite holds true as well. For this example, we're going to synchronize bidirectionally. Now, what I want to do is synchronize my music from this computer, and I want to synchronize it to the, H, the MacBook Pro. So, I can take my first volume, which is going to be my iMac music folder, and if I hit choose, I will go into my iMac, and I will select music, iTunes, iTunes music, and hit the select button. Now my left target is set. My right target needs to be on the MacBook Pro. Well, what needs to happen is I first choose it, and we go to, I'll move this over so we can see, the MacBook Pro, and because we're logged in as a registered user, the shared folder doesn't show up anymore, or it does show up, but all the folders that I've shared do. I hit the iTunes Music. That is the iTunes Music on the MacBook Pro. Okay, so I'm also going to put in the synchronized deletions, meaning if I delete music over here, it's going to delete over here. Okay, now you get different options. When deleting files, they can move them to an archive in the program, so they're not technically ever truly deleted, and you can always restore them if you realize you made a mistake. I'm going to, I'm going to put in, I want them to go to the trash. I'm going to just delete on that side. So, our next, our next section is to go to our options. Here we have a whole bunch of different things that we can do as far as setting up the sync. Now, if you look, there's how to report what's going on, folder and file handling, archive handling, sync triggers. Let's go to sync triggers. Sync triggers are basically going to show us what has to happen to a file in order for it to cons be considered something that needs to be synced from one side to the other. Well, the big thing is modification date. For example, if you have a file that's the same size and has the same name, the date is the only option that's going to tell you, um, that's going to tell the program that there's something different. So, if there's any time difference, it's going to sync it to where the more current time. Also, I like to use file size. So if we change the file with a bigger file or a better file, if the file size is different but the name is the same, the file size will opt, will create a synchronization as well. I'm going to take off the other sections like timestamps, finder flags, and lock status. Now, here you see you can put in, you can put in email notifications if you do this on the scheduling portion of the program to where if you look up here, you can schedule this to run at certain times. We're not going to do that right now. And this is a part we'll this is a part we'll talk about next. This is about scripts. Basically, once you've synchronized two folders together, iTunes doesn't recognize anything until you tell it to look in this folder again. There's some new MP3s that I've put into the music folder. So this is assuming you're not letting iTunes manage your music by yourself. I'm going to click a post synchronization script. The post synchronization script I'm going to use, as you'll see later, is right here. And it's called iTunes Update. Basically, what this is going to do is after you have a synchronization, it's going to make iTunes re look at the iTunes music folder and update the library with the new songs automatically. So you don't have to do that. And then we're going to have some rules. Rules are basically asked, what kind of files, what kind of file sizes, etc., do we want to um, incorporate into the synchronization? We're going to do file name extensions. I'm going to make sure that the extension is MP3, 
So we make sure that in case any kind of random other files get in there like a JPEG or an AAC file, I don't like to use those. Um, I want to make sure everything's in MP3s and every only MP3s are synced. So let's do a trial sync and see how this works. I'll have to pause the video here because there's a lot of different albums for this to go through. It doesn't take very long. Okay, so as you can see, the trial sync completed with no files to be synchronized because before I did this tutorial, I've already synchronized the files from one computer to the other. So there really are no new files between the two machines. That means all the files have the same date and all the files have the same file size. Now, as you can see down at the bottom, a little context menu, a context message came up. And it says, update music index for iTunes. You'll see this in the next part of the tutorial, but this is the beginning of the automator script that I talked about a little bit earlier. Being that the synchronization is run, this script is now executed. And basically, I've typed in this information as part of the script. And it says, this action will scan for new files or folders in your iTunes directory, then update your library accordingly. So, by hitting OK, iTunes should start looking for new files and folders. And if anything is found that's new, it will put them in the library and they'll be ready for me to use. So I hope that this information was uh, 